Hello and welcome to Feldenkrais with Alphonse. I am Alphonse and I'm teaching Feldenkrais method of somatic education here on YouTube. If you have never done Feldenkrais before, then this is something you have never done before. Does this make sense? Basically for me it's always exciting to do a new video. Sometimes it's very easy for me to, to come up and just start filming and sometimes I do some planning and sometimes I'm very nervous and have like stage fright. I've been teaching a couple of Feldenkrais lessons already, you can see on my channel. So people come to my channel, that's very exciting and I like it. And more and more people who have never done Feldenkrais before, the Feldenkrais method of somatic education, and they come to my channel and then I have a list of questions. And then they, they some of them enjoy it a lot, and some of them, they ask me questions like, I have a knee problem, what to do, I have a back problem, what to do, uh, shoulder, can you help me with this, can you help me with that? This is uh, not a medical profession. It's not even a teaching profession. We provide, or I try to provide an environment for learning, for experiencing yourself. First, I have a, a case example of a guy who called me, who came in, and who took lessons with me in, in this studio. He's uh, around 50, I guess. He's a software engineer, very smart guy, and has a strong hip problems. He already went to a couple of doctors. He, there's no need for surgery. And he was to physiotherapy, I think like 50 times or something like this, and didn't help him at all. So he started to look around what he can do and, and for some reason he, he found me. And then we went to my table and I gave him a lesson in functional integration. This is what we call if somebody is on my table and I push and pull <laughs> and move this person on the table, like the pain got less after one lesson, a lot less. So he decided to come back. Good for me, good for my business, good for him because less pain. So he came back, we worked again on the table, he got better again, uh, we made a third appointment, and after the third appointment he didn't make any progress anymore. He was good, it was much better than before, but I, mm, no progress. So I was thinking, what to do with this guy? So I brought him into my group study room here with the carpet, with this mattress, I just put this mattress here so I can lean against it a little bit while talking. And then I, I wanted to start to guide him through a movement sequence, like we do in Feldenkrais group classes. And this guy, he started talking. <laughs> I couldn't move him uh, through or guide him through a row of suggestions of movement because he just started talking. And he was talking this and talking that and having questions, this and this and, and no movement. I was thinking, oh, that's strange, he's a very smart guy and there's... so he came back for another appointment and I tried the same thing and at the second appointment he was already better. So this is a progress, he was making progress uh, in a way that he was able to um, hear my instructions, to hear my suggestions and start to do the movements here on the floor. In this case it was a, a very simple, very simple just uh, lying flat on the floor, one leg standing and then pushing against the floor. I think I had, I have this class on YouTube already, right? And it was interesting because he had no image. He had no image of how to perform such a, a movement. And it, his movements were a mess. <laughs> he was all over the place and there was no structure, no organization, as I like to call it. There was no concept for movement, and this was interesting because he's a successful software engineer, very smart. Mm. But after the, this successful group lesson, after one hour, he, he, he started to realize that there's more in this world than just like working, of course, but also more than sports, just running or, or more than stretching. He, he started to realize there's something like movement organization where you get aware of what's happening in your body in detailed steps. And we took it from there and it was interesting to see this progress in this guy. Mm. 
Now, the second question I wrote down, which I get uh, sometimes, is what is the difference between yoga and Feldenkrais? So, interesting questions. So, Feldenkrais is a whole different, comes from a whole different direction. It's a somatic education. Many of these educators you can see in this graph emphasized internal perception and experience as experienced by the individual, as opposed to performative techniques which emphasize the external observation of movement either by an audience or the individual in that regard. It's a huge field of study, enormous, and I don't think that people realize just yet how deep that rabbit hole goes. For example, if I take like a, a yoga position, <laughs> I did meditate for many years, but I never did yoga, to be honest. I went to a couple of classes just to, to know what it is, what people do there. I'm a Feldenkrais practitioner, so I'm very curious what's in my environment. So I, I visit classes, but like there's this position, right, in yoga where, it, where they cross over the leg and then do, they do this. And then the, the, of course, it looks more beautiful with the yoga people. Uh, they look very upright and very orderly. And then they push with the elbow against the knee. Oh, and then they do this, which I would call is a stretch. So in Feldenkrais, it's very different. We focus on awareness, our movement sequences. So it's not hold the posture, no stretching, but we have movement se movements put together into sequences to get more aware of what is happening inside when we move, to notice what is happening when we move, to improve the organization, and it's, it's, it's a, a learning, and this has a very calming effect. It has a, a beautiful effect on our whole self. Well, when people leave my class, they look very content. <laughs> they, they look like, they look bright. Something happened inside of them and they, they look relaxed. They chat, they have a good time, they, they, they feel at ease. So if I assume a position like, like this, which would be like a stretching position in, in yoga, which might improve the ability to rotate for some people. People who have good genetics for this uh, slender spine, discs who can turn very well. The slender yoga people, they will benefit from it. B but at least 50% of people will not benefit from, from such a <coughs> twisting stretch. They will just start to delaminate the, the outer rings of their discs and get back pain and maybe get unable to go to work and unable to continue with yoga because they will ruin their backs. So in Feldenkrais, it's the same thing, like a rotation lesson. We would assume a side sitting position and maybe use the hand to push against the floor, to just to stand against the floor, which will take pressure off the lower back, of course. And then we would rotate. And this would be like a 20 minute lesson, 30 minute lesson. Maybe I will do it. I want to do a series of, of beginner's lesson. That's what I'm actually talking about. I want to do a series of beginner's lesson. I will start somewhere and then, yes, take it from there. So in, this, in such a rotation lesson, we would first just turn like this, yes, a couple of times, just to feel how it is, how far does it go, then we would differentiate, for example, the head movements from the shoulder movements, just turn with the shoulder and then just do head movements to, be, to get aware of what's happening in the neck, to get aware of how is the relationship to the lower spine. Then we might do just eye movements to see how the eyes organize movement, how the eyes affect on the tonus of the neck. And we do it very slow and very gentle so we can really observe what is happening in, in these many, many muscles, in these many small muscles. Then we will have another movement, for example, with flexion and extension to start to um, investigate 
to explore into how flexion and extension is related to twisting. Then we might have some side bending in different variations to see how side bending affects twisting, how side, side bending how side bending in, is involved into flexion. I'm already getting more flexible just talking about it. Then we will investigate, of course, into the movement of the hip. The hip is connected to the spine, obviously. Then we might do something with the knee or, or the foot or the ankle to see how is the connection of the ankle to the twisting. And then after half an hour later, with a couple of rests in between, the, the twist will be much easier and much better organized. People will know a lot more about what's going on in the body. This is becoming really aware because we are working with awareness, right? I hope, I hope you can understand the difference. And that's all I'm going to say about the difference between yoga and Feldenkrais right now. Then, for my Feldenkrais online classes here on YouTube, usually you would go to a Feldenkrais class, like I have it here in my room with my students. But it's 2016, isn't it? And there's people who don't have Feldenkrais practitioners in their town and they don't know what is Fel Felden, Felden, yes? They don't know what it is and they might not want to invest time or money to find out, but here on YouTube it's easy. You just click on it, you have a look, and then you like it and you want to explore more. So I have these YouTube classes, and it's fun to teach for me too. It's a new media, it's exciting, it's exciting to teach for me. So the question was, why do you give everything away for free? <laughs> Why do you teach at YouTube at all? So first of all, I'm not giving away everything for free. You have to know these classes are a little bit of a secret. This whole method has been a little bit of a secret and it's not easy to access. And with YouTube, I want to make it easier to, to access so you can have a look and you can study together with me. But of course, it's not the same. Like in my example with the software engineer in the beginning, he would not be able to benefit from YouTube classes. I had to have this lively inter interaction and to lead him into awareness and, and exploration and feeling the body and feeling connections. And in a live class, I can see you and I can react to what you do. And you react to what I do. And there's other students and you can see their process and you will enter a process. And you can chit chat and discuss or just see what somebody else is doing or have a nap. It's completely different in a live class. But I value YouTube a lot. Where was I? No, I'm not giving it away for free. There's advertisements in the beginning or the end of the videos. So whenever you watch an advertisement, YouTube pays me a couple of cents. So when there's a couple of thousand people watching my videos, which is happening nowadays, it's crazy, isn't it? A couple of thousands of people are watching this. So there's a couple of cents here, a couple of cents there, and, and in the end, I get a little bit of money. That, that's one benefit for you, uh, for me. For you, you don't have to pay, and for me, I, I receive a little bit of uh, compensation. And of course, it's, the whole video is advertisement for the Feldenkrais Method, and it's advertisement for myself, because I like to travel, I, I like to teach, and uh, when I become better known, this is my advertisement, the, the free classes. So it's not entirely free, we all benefit from it. We have this connection, this mutual benefit from each other. This is pretty cool, isn't it? Hmm, dum, dum, dum. That's actually all, all I wanted to talk about in the beginning. And now I want to start in, ah yeah. So people ask me, ah, I have this problem, I have that problem, can you help me, can you help me? And it's difficult online and I would like to have like a sequence of lessons I can say, okay, you have, Please have a look at these lessons, work through these lessons online to get to know how, what is the Feldenkrais method. And maybe there is no specific knee lesson, but maybe they have a problem in the chest. And resolving the problem in the chest will also resolve their knee. We will not know because, we have <laughs> because it's YouTube, right? So we have to work systematically through a row of lessons. So that, that's what I want to do in the next couple of weeks to design a course 
but not only to design, just to create the course, like an organic way of creating videos. And I will create the videos and you will be able to follow these videos. So, okay, so this was my speech. So in Feldenkrais, we have the table work, we have the group classes, and we have lectures. Lecturing is a part of Feldenkrais. Little stories to set up the mood for classes, to give a little bit of information. And OK, I will put the, 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 the lessons in a playlist. So I will have this lecture in the beginning. And then please continue to the next video for the first lesson in this series. Um, and I will get myself ready for the first lesson and you uh, please uh, switch to the, to the video with the lesson. Uh, and see you there. Anything else I need to say? Um, 